This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? This is Tesla Model Y Long Range. And in this video, we're gonna walk through the interior, a little bit of trunk and frunk, and that's gonna be it. So let's start with the frunk, shall we? Okay, let's see. Frunk looks like this. Quite spacious, and, but it's missing the... Uh, it's missing the carpet, but I can show you that. This is a fairly big um, bag, camera bag. Well, I even, I, I could almost fit in here. I've mean, shown it before, but just to show you, it's quite spacious. You can probably put a small stroller in here or some other bags. And also here is the, what the heck is this thing? And here we have the cap for filling the washer fluid. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, it has the release button in here for, it's just American car, so you don't trap anyone in here. <laughs> charge port is here. On the left side is the right side, not on the right side is the wrong side. And it's also heated and it's motorized. So in winter, you will not get any frost problems here. And then if we, of course, drive off, it will uh, automatically Close. There. Lovely. And here we have motorized lift gate. But like I mentioned before, I feel like it's it starts going quite slow. There you go. And this trunk is huge. So well you see here on each side of the trunk we have a deep pocket. I can then use the the camera bag as an example to show you that it can fit even a camera bag in the side here just fine or let's say we take the umc here universal mobile connector you can put it in there you can also take this type 2 cable it also fits there and you can even fit more so the same on the other side here so this is something I forgot to mention in the banana box test because I could simply not put the banana box in here. But uh, for example, the, the Ionic 5 that many people mention, they don't have this pocket. So again, the banana box test is just what it is. And then you see here we can take up this lid. And again, the space under here is just humongous. Yeah, I will start measuring soon. Let's take this one out. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. Okay, let's do this then. All right, let's remove the cables and then we can start measuring with my laser can. I brought this one. So let's start with the length here. Oh, I like this. There is, there is actually no edge here. Some cars, they will have a little edge, but this one, if you measure the length here, 1.1 meter. Wow. The width here is uh, 95 centimeters. Slightly further up, you get 103 centimeters and then the height here is 69 centimeters and then diagonally like this the opening is 110 centimeters but you see now we can start measuring this one with the lid open construct <laughs> a little complex to measure everything here the depth here and depending on where you measure it let's say from from here and down the depth is actually 46 centimeters. <clears throat> and then the width here is uh, 77 centimeters. Yeah. And then this direction here is, wait, where did it go? That, <clears throat> 43, 44 centimeters. This is a huge opening for putting your cargo. But you see here, under here, it doesn't look big, but this is something similar to, um, I saw in the, in the GTX or ID4. The space under here, um, I think it's around 10 centimeters high and it has a weird shape but again you can put so much luggage here so of course if you have to do something like this <clears throat> and then need to measure the height here suddenly it becomes 81 centimeters so plenty of space in the trunk and the loading height here again without this edge without edge i like it loading height is about 70 centimeters that's good and now to fold the seat you can just do this we have some buttons, fold like this, easy. Now we have, yeah, this is just the regular seating position. 
Whoa, 1.9 cent. Why do I measure on this edge? Oh, because this one closes. Yeah, yeah. So it's not fair to measure, measure here because, yeah. So you have to measure here. So it was 1.9 meters or 190 centimeters diagonally like this, even without pushing the seat forward uh, is 205 centimeters. This car is freaking humongous. And I guess this is the advantage of uh, fairly flat seats because you see how flat the floor becomes. This is flatter than most other cars I've seen. Yeah, some cars they have a little edge here or some cars they, they slope further up. But here you get, uh, I'm not sure how to describe this. You, you already see how flat it is. It flats like, it's as flat as Kansas. Let me check the width of the seat roughly. Oh, 130 centimeters. That's nice and wide. And also, let's check the height of the seat here. From there, roughly. 35 centimeters. It feels good. It doesn't feel too low. But not the highest I've seen. I think some of the higher ones are more like 36, 37 centimeters. So 35 is okay for an EV. Oh, I can see, you know, you see here. It's been the whole, uh, well, the, the seat has been raised up. Everything here, the middle console has been raised up compared to Model 3. Yeah, the Model 3, this one would almost be on the floor level. So they just did this to give you more room. And we have, wow, plenty of space under here. Uh, <laughs> I have never seen this one, this type of space in a long time. Even in other cars like um, uh, the GTO, uh, the, the ID4, Enyaq. From what I remember, it, it wasn't that spacious. And I have to say that this one also, ooh, I also like this, that you actually have some space here. Many cars are more cramped here in the middle. And you see, we have a completely flat floor. And I guess it's also good that, in a way, it's good that the seats are flat like this. So it makes it, I guess, more comfortable for three people. Yeah, white seats, wow. And here we see we have, oh, I'm not a fan of this one. Uh, how, okay, okay. <laughs> to open the middle console thing here, you have to. <clears throat> Most cars I've seen nowadays, there is a little tab here you can pull. This one is harder. So, yeah, next time, Tesla, make a little thing here so you can pull it out. And this becomes a table and an armrest. And it's actually long. Ooh, wait a minute. I like this one. We have a okay, cup holder here. Ideally, I want to have the cup holders here because you're not using that space anywhere. And then you can have a table or something else here. But I guess it's okay. But I like that it has big bolters on the side. Let me try to feel how it is. If I, yeah, yeah, ooh, I like this one. Oh yeah. And then let me check mandatory headroom. It's about a fist of headroom. I'm 173 centimeters. What about in the middle here? Oh, slightly less. I feel like the seat is higher on the middle. Then you have barely a fist of headroom there. But also, let me check here. You're supposed to be able to recline the seat. How the heck did I do that one again? Oh, yeah, yeah, this one, of course. You do this, and then you can recline the seat a couple of degrees, and you see versus that one. So, ooh, now I have a nice angle. But when you recline the seat, then suddenly, eh. so if you're a tall person, you will rub into this beam here. So that's the downside. So the reclining feature is mostly for short Asians. Ding! Yes. Here we have a hook for clothes. Wait, there, there, there. But no handles still. I don't know what's up with Tesla. They don't want to give you those handles here. We have light here. We can turn on and off. And a little uh, pocket here behind the seat. We have two USB-C air vents there. And let's see, I can show you now, it's getting dark, sorry. Today is just hard to uh, do videos. Here we have a pocket, door pocket, with some fabric on the inside. I like it, it just gives you the nice, more premium feel. Here also, something that feels like Alcatara, but I think that, I don't think they use any animal products, animal leather here. And let me show you now, so we're gonna, here's the way to open and close it just like in the Model 3. I like this design, it's very ergonomic. 
this one is tinted you can see it versus that one you see and oh the door the door looks looks thick and see it's just nice even okay this is hard but the the surface that you touch even on the inside here has some rubberized material that is slightly different than this side so everything you touch here looks and feels and sounds nice and sounds premium so you see in the past tesla has been known for having shitty interior but i don't agree that they have shitty interior in the model 3 and model y anymore the front seat seems to have been raised up a bit compared to the model 3 but i don't feel like i'm sitting let me recall uh, the setting here yeah i don't feel like i'm sitting in a van or a typical suv i still feel like i'm sitting in a sedan maybe just slightly raised for example i spend a lot of time in model x that's more than suv and then you sit you sit more upright but here you still sit more like a sedan and then we have electric adjustable seat here just like the other one no need to explain it too much we also have lumbar support here and steering wheel yeah that's you just have to get used to it steering wheel you just have to press one button and then you can start adjusting it it goes up and down and also in and out and this is standard even for the cheapest tesla standard range plus you also have electric adjustable steering wheel and then it will also be saved of course same with the mirrors and then here we have the sun visor with makeup light here and it rotates or pivots but it also extends again not many cars have this actually very few cars have it and the front here is more or less the same as the back the same design we also have the the fabric here i like it uh, same here the button and here we have the the emergency release button oh okay i, I <laughs> accidentally you see this is the regular open close actually the bmw ix also is the exact same design but here is the the emergency release thing but then it was there will be a warning that uh, you might damage window trim so you shouldn't be using that one always use this one and here we have that trim the new trim that they start using now interesting uh, however i don't like this super white trim here because when i'm driving it just disturbs my vision and it, uh, it in the daytime it reflects too much and also weird choice because we have white seats you can see here white interior white seats but the center here is black for example in the model x like optimus prime this one would also be white so i can show you that design wise i don't know it looks a bit weird or or maybe not maybe tesla found out that that one will be too smutzish if it's white <laughs> so i don't know but anyway let's get inside this one is just the same as the model 3 see you can charge your phone here this is brilliant in the beginning i was like well okay you just have two charging pads there well so what well once you get used to it it's so nice that you have you can charge it here but you can also take a look at this if someone is trying to call you you can see oh who's calling you well you can see it here also but you know what i mean you can actually see stuff on the screen here and here we have a nice big pocket for storing some of your sheet and we have two usb-c here they're also fast we have cup holders here there's no heating or cooling going on just the, those rings are just there here we have more space for stuff and here we have a 12 volt outlet just like in the model 3 let me see what does oh there's one thing i don't like this one here the magnet here i no it, it just does, wait there's some plastic they forgot to remove here but every time i try to do uh, the, the, every time i try to do this or this it tends to it tends to snap out maybe they changed this one but i remember in the in the model 3 it kept going off the magnet all the time so that's not uh, i don't like it let me see lights on when i have some cabin lights let me check headroom here is it any better than the model 3 oh yeah more than a fist almost two fists of headroom here massive headroom at least for me again i'm still 173 centimeters so you see the interior here just looks and feels 
like a Model 3. And that's because Tesla, they reuse most of the hardware to simplify things. And also for me, I like the interior in the Model 3. Also the seats, well, this just happened to be white seats, but I'm gonna tell you that I've been sitting in many, many cars, many, many different brands, and I like the Model 3 seats. Well, every time I go in the other cars, okay, some of them are nice, like, like for example, the, the, the Nissan zero, zero gravity seats. Uh, but uh, when I come back here, it's like, ooh, they are soft. They give you sufficient side support, but without being two bucket seats. Uh, the only problem with the black seats I have is that uh, because it's synthetic material, it doesn't breathe that much, so I tend to get sweaty. I have never tried the white ones before, we'll find out, I guess, <laughs> how good or bad they are for transporting sweat, but it could also be the same, unfortunately. But when it comes to softness and comfort, it's just brilliant. And by the way, these ones are just wheel caps, just like a Model 3. So I don't know if you like them or not, but you can actually take them off. Uh, just pull them right off. Let me see. Wait, hang on. Uh, you just have to use some significant force. Uh, man, let's hope I don't break anything. There, okay. I just pop them off. And here you have it. And just like a Model 3, you can then put some center cup here and maybe some nicer wheel nut, I mean, the nut covers. And then you can drive around with this. How do you think about that? Does it look better? Do you like it? Do you like that shit? Yeah, this is what it looks like now. Huh? Which one do you prefer? But I guess if you put the, the caps on, you will get slightly better aerodynamics, and especially at high speed, about 120 kilometers per hour, you should have some uh, advantage there. And here is where the caps on. So do you want the caps on or caps off the most? So there you have it, Tesla Model Y. Okay, it's not the most beautiful car out there. I agree. I, I think actually Model S is sexier. There are many other cars that are sexier, but remember, this is a crossover slash SUV. So when you look at SUVs crossover out there, many of them are also not very beautiful. For example, the Kia e Nero. I like the car, but the looks is like, ugh. So, and I could say the same with other crossover SUVs also. So in that regard, my claim is that the, it's not the, it's not the prettiest car, but it's also not the ugliest car out there. So, um, but on the other hand, if you compare this one versus the Model X, the Model X is bigger. It's based on all the tech. It has, it doesn't have the conventional doors. And also the ride and the sportiness of the Model X. Model X is heavier and it feels more like a boat. But this one feels more like driving a Model 3, but just like a heavy, a fat Model 3. And I enjoy driving the, the Model Y, it's way more fun. But you also have the practical stuff, like you have more space in the front, you have more space in the cabin, more space in the trunk. So for people who don't like Model 3, they think it's too small, try Model Y if you don't mind using a Tesla. And I think you'll be super happy with it. So I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. Oh, I finished before it was too dark.